Hello and welcome to my next video on cells. So introduction to cells. A cell is the basic building block of all life and here I've got an animal cell. Now all the things that are labelled are called organelles. These are just structures in the cell that have a specialised function. See, there are lots of them and I will come on to say what they all are. Here is a plant cell. As you can see, they are a few, there are a few differences, mainly the cell wall, the chloroplast and a much bigger vacuole. I'll now explain what these organelles are. All right, Plasma membrane. It's not a cell membrane anymore, it's a plasma membrane for anyone who's starting AS. Cell membrane is found on the surface of animal cells and on plant cells, the plant cells have cell walls. Now this regulates the movements of any substances that are going in and out of the cell. As we'll look at in a later video, how the cell membrane works. It has receptor sites for hormones and other protein molecules to attach to. And it is partially permeable to substances, allowing some in, some out cell wall. This is a rigid part that supports plant cells. In plants it's made of cellulose, in fungi it's made of something called chitin. It supports a plant and gives it strength. This is the nucleus. Now this is the main bit of the cell which controls the whole cell. We have the big black circle is the nucleolus. That is where most of the genetic material is kept in kind of a dense ball. You then have nuclear pores. These regulate what goes in and out of the cell, such as um, paths of DNA, more mRNA, and that. And the whole nucleus itself is the main circle you'll see inside a cell. Lysosomes. These contain hydrolytic enzymes. These are digestive enzymes for digesting bacteria or anything in the cell. And they can also be programmed to release hydrolytic enzymes into the whole cell and cause cell death. Rhizosomes, you have a small subunit on top, a large subunit on the bottom. Now these are about 22 nanometers big in an animal cell, so quite small. Animal cells can be about, are usually around 40 micrometers. Um, in case you don't know what the difference is, you have a meter, which if you're just writing it, you have one meter. You will then have centimeters, which is... 1 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, millimeters, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 3, micrometers, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6, nanometers, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 9. The rhizosomes are the sites where proteins are made. They can either be free floating into the cytoplasm or they can be attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which we look at next. This will be the rough ER will be connected to the nuclear membrane. These contain lots of ribosomes and processed proteins. You have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now this is the same as the rough endoplasmic reticulum but contains no ribosomes. This synthesizes and processes lipids which are fats. You have a vesicle. This is a small fluid filled sac. This will transport substances in and out of the cell. It will fuse to the cell membrane and then will allow substances in or out. It's, as we'll look at later, it's a way of transporting hormones and other proteins made. Golgi apparatus. This is a group of fluid-filled flattened sacs. Often there are vesicles on the edge. It processes and packages proteins and lipids and can also make ribos ribosomes, so very important. Mitochondrion, or plural mitochondria. These have a double membrane. It's quite hard to draw, but it has two membranes, an outer and an inner. Then it has a matrix, which is the inside, and crista, which are the little lines you can see, kind of folds in the membrane. This is a site of aerobic respiration, that's respiration with oxygen, where ATP is produced, that's energy. They're found in places where there's lots of energy is needed, so for example, in nerve cells, if you're doing A2, they're found in the synapse and cell body, they're found in sperm cells, lots of different cells that require energy. 
chloroplasts. Now these are only found in plant cells and this is where photosynthesis takes place. Now these again have a double membrane and they have something called grana or gr well, grana is plural, granum singular, which is kind of little stacks you can see of thylakoid membranes. And these are linked by lamellae, lamellae, I think. These are thin, flat pieces of thylakoid membrane. That's a little bit you can see in between. And these have photosynthetic pigments in, which can cause photosynthesis to occur, which is how plants get their energy. You have a centriole. Now, these are at 90 degree angles to each other. These are involved in the separation of chromosomes and cell division, which we'll look at later. The cytoskeleton, this is a network of protein threads. Now this can be things called microtubules. These are cylinders about 25 nanometers made of tubulin. Um, there are also um, cilia, which can are like on the inside of the throat. They can waft particles and flagellum, which is like one long cilia which can cause movement. The main roles of the cytoskeleton is to support organelles, making sure they keep their shape, can strengthen and support the whole cell, can transport things throughout the cell, and in the case of flagellum, can cause movement. Working together. Here is a way that the protein or hormone insulin is made. You have a gene at part one, number one, you have a gene in the DNA, which will be copied through proteins, um, through transcription, translation, which you don't need to know about till A2 for quite a while. Um, then it will be transported out of the cell as mRNA at two, attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum at three. Now this will code for a specific protein, in this case, insulin. Insulin will be created at number four, and then a vesicle will bud off or pinch off, depending what, and fuse with a Golgi apparatus at the forming phase. This, the Golgi apparatus at six will then package and process insulin molecules ready for release, and then a vesicle will bud off again at seven and will move towards the cell surface membrane. At eight, it will bind to the cell surface membrane and will release the molecule by exocytosis, which we'll learn about in a bit and at a nine, and then you've got the molecule insulin. So this would happen a lot in the pancreatic cells, in particular beta cells, if you're doing A2. Microscopes. Now, as we have said, cells are very small, often, you know, micrometers. So we need a way of seeing them. Now, this is why we use microscopes. Now, firstly, two important definitions. Magnification is the degree to which the size of an image is larger than the object itself. So this would be times a certain number. And resolution is the degree to which it is possible to distinguish between two objects that are very close together. So if you had a resolution of two meters, it means if you saw anything, if any two objects were closer than two meters, you would be only be able to see them as one object. Right. And there are three types of microscopes. Light, transmission electron microscopes, with TEMs, and scanning electron microscopes, SEM. And here is a table of what you need to know about them. So as you can see, light microscopes have the low, well, highest resolution, such that it's a larger number. So they can see, they can only see object, well, objects that are 0.2 micrometers apart without being seen as one object, that's maximum. And then transmission electron microscopes are the best with 0 0.0002 micrometers, that's also 0 0.2 nanometers. And this is aimed for magnification. Light magnification is the worst. Transmission electron microscope is the best. With light microscopes, you can have the specimen alive or dead, but both transmission and scanning electron microscopes need to be dead because they are seen in a vacuum. And in scanning electron microscope, you have to coat them with something like gold or platinum. Price. Light microscopes are a lot cheaper. Electron microscopes are more expensive and require specialist training to use them. Anyone can use a light microscope. With light, you can get colour through staining and sectioning. Very briefly, staining is when you just put a little drop of stain onto a cell um, or 
the specimen you're looking at. Some stains bind to specific cell structures, so you can see those cell structures more clearly. Transmission, um, oh sorry, and sectioning is when specimens are embedded in wax. Thin sections are then cut without distorting the structure of the specimen. Tran electron microscopes you cannot see in colour unless you use false colour. This is just when the colour is added later. And dimension. Light and transmission electron microscopes can only be seen in 2D. Scanning electron microscopes can be seen in 3D. And one of the only calculations you need to know at AS level is image size, actual size and magnification. You see a little formula triangle. To work out image size, you times actual size and magnification together. Magnification is image divided by actual size, and actual size is image divided by magnification. And here's an example. This cell is 5 centimeters, that is the image size. The I said the magnification is times 1250. So, how do you work out the actual size of that cell? Well, you want to use actual size equals image size over magnification. The image size is 5 centimeters, that is 5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, always convert into meters, divided by the magnification, 1250. That equals 40 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, or 40 micrometers, always best convert it back into micrometers or nanometers, whichever is more appropriate. Now, there are two main types of cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes mean before nucleus. In other words, they don't have a nucleus, eukaryotes do. Prokaryotes are generally smaller, eukaryotes are larger. By large, I don't mean you know, massive, I mean about 40 micrometers, but still prokaryotes can be nanometers. Prokaryotes contain circular DNA, that's in plasmids, not in chromosomes. Eukaryotes have chromosomes. As we said, prokaryotes have no nucleus, eukaryotes do. Prokaryotes have a peptidoglycan cell wall, and eukaryotes have cellulose in plants and chitin in fungi. Prokaryotes have few organelles and no mitochondria. They use something called mesosomes for energy production. Eukaryotes have many organelles, including mitochondria. And prokaryotes have small ribosomes, 18 nanometers. Eukaryotes have large ribosomes, 22 nanometers. And here is a bacteria. This is a prokaryote. As you can see, the DNA is kind of in loops. You have plasmids, which are rings of DNA, the cell wall, mesosomes, ribosomes. As you see, not as much in it as the other cells. So in conclusion, three main types of cells you need to know about at this stage. Animal cells, plant cells, and, bacteri and bacterial or prokaryotic cells. You know about all the different organelles, what they look like, so you can see them in a picture, and what they do. You know how organelles work, work together, in particular that example of packaging and processing of proteins. And you need to know about microscopes, that's light microscopes, transmission electron microscopes, and scanning electron microscopes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, obviously leave a comment or email me or like, do whatever, and I'll be sure to do more. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.